Hello again. This is Rich. I'd like to go over what I talked about earlier. I said that Noah's flood was actually the second time God flooded the earth because he flooded the earth in Genesis 1. Then I went on to talk about how Adam, in fact, was the second man. The first man in Genesis 1.26 was a hunter-gatherer and his job was to go all over the whole earth and subdue it, be fruitful, multiply, and refill the earth. Well, the Lord God formed Adam to stay in the garden and to dress it and to keep it because there was not yet a man to till the soil. Later, Cain killed his brother and moved into the land of Nard and he married one of the Genesis 1 women. And then you had three sets of people on the earth. You had the Genesis 1 man who were hunter-gatherers. Then you had the Adamites who were farmers. Now you got the Canaanites. These, this, these are people who are mixed with farmers and hunter-gatherers. Matter of fact, the Canaanites were the most technologically advanced people on the earth. They knew how to take metal from the rocks. The, the hunters knew about rocks and the farmers knew about rocks. But when they combined the combined knowledge, these people were able to make weapons. Matter of fact, they were able to get metal out of those same rocks that the hunters were used to using, as well as the same rock that the farmers were used to using. And they made metal weapons. Matter of fact, they were the most technologically advanced people on the earth. They were called the Canaanites. Yes. But today, I want to talk about Genesis 3, the serpent. Now we know the Bible tells us, well let's just read what it says here. It says in Genesis 3, Now the serpent was, the, was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Now the first thing I noticed about the serpent, the serpent could talk. Yeah, the serpent could talk. Then it says, And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now the serpent was talking to the woman, and the woman was talking to the serpent. It was normal that a serpent can talk. But now a serpent was not the same as a snake. Then it goes on to say, And the serpent said again unto the woman, You shall not surely die. And then, you know, they sinned, and, and um, God had to deal with, with Adam, and then God had to deal with Eve. But let's look at what God said to the serpent. He said, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because you have done this thing, you are cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall you go, and thus shall you eat all the days of your life. Now he said to the serpent, You shall no longer be a serpent. From this point on, you're just going to crawl on your belly. So apparently, the serpent didn't always crawl on his belly. He could do something else before he was uh, cast down into the form of what we call a snake. Basically, the serpent was not a snake. The serpent was some other kind of creature. Now, I studied through the Bible to find out what kind of creature was the serpent before he became a snake. I noticed that in, Gen in Numbers 21, verse 8, in the King James it says, And the Lord God said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten when he look upon it shall live. Now this is talking about where a plague of snakes had come in. But the Lord God told Moses to make a fiery serpent. Hmm, listen to that. Then in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 29, in the King James it says, Rejoice not thou, whole Palestinian, because the rod of him that smote thee is broken, for out of the serpent's root shall come forth a cockatrice, and his fruit shall be a fiery flying serpent. Now, a fire-breathing flying serpent is called a dragon. Yeah, a fire-breathing dragon. The serpent was a fire-breathing dragon. Yes. Now, in Isaiah 27, verse 1, it says, In that day, the Lord with his sword and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan. Now, Leviathan, the piercing serpent, and even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. 
and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. This creature was a sea monster, a fire-breathing dragon sea monster called the Leviathan. Now, as we continue to study on this serpent, this dragon, the Leviathan, Isaiah goes on to say in chapter 30, verse 6, The burden of the beasts of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion, the viper, and fiery flying serpent. This is right here in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 6. The viper and fiery flying serpent. Now this is a fire-breathing flying dragon. Now in Job, Job gives the greatest description of the Leviathan. It goes on to say in Job chapter 41, verse 1 in the King James, it says, Canst thou draw out Leviathan with an hook? or his tongue with a cord which thou lettest down? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely portion. Who can open the doors of his face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride, shut up together as with a closed seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. By his nestling a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils smoke goes as a seething pot or a cauldron. His breath kindles coals, and a flame goes out of his mouth. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. Basically, he is given the description of a fire-breathing dragon. Now, one day I was reading about this creature in the arm. Um, in the Bible, they had a commentary at the bottom, and the commentary said, this creature is possibly a crocodile. Now, who could read this description? It says that his, he kindles coals with a flame, and a flame goes out of his mouth. It said out of his nostrils go smoke, and out of, out of a seething pot of cauld cauldron. His, out of his mouth go burning lamps, and sparks of fire leap out. Now, this got to be a fire-breathing dragon. This is a fire-breathing dragon. The Lord is talking about a fire. He's given us the description of a fire-breathing dragon. This is the creature that the serpent was before he was turned into a snake. He said, the serpent no longer shall be a serpent, but will crawl upon his belly. Mainly because once Adam sinned and he no longer had power over animals, he could not control such a creature because at that time Adam and Eve, they did not fear any creature. They were just like God. They were the greatest of all creation. But once Adam sinned and Eve sinned and they, were, they no longer had the glory of God in their lives, now all of a sudden these beasts could rise up against them. And the very first creature that the Lord had to change was the serpent. The serpent could no longer be a fire-breathing dragon and walk on the earth at the same time man was on the earth. So he had to put a stop to that. In the book of Revelation, Revelation 12, verse 9, it says, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And then the last time we see it is in Revelation 20, verse 2, and it says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. That serpent that we read about in Genesis 3, before he was turned into a snake and had to crawl on his belly, he in fact was a fire-breathing dragon. It's right here in the Bible. Now there's much more information. I wrote it in a book on my website, ReginaldO.com. You can read more about it and get more information, but it's right there on my book. It's called, Have You Ever Wondered? On my website, www.reginalo.com. Go check it out. Thank you. Bless you.